Hello everybody. I'm really excited today. I have been uh, printing out textiles, something I've never done before because I am quite new to uh, journaling and textile art etc. So I've been printing on some fabric. This is just cotton fabric that I coffee stained yesterday and I've printed on it with an ordinary inkjet printer and I've printed, this is an old postcard. These are from my porch print Shabby Fairy. It's a little tiny postcard. Obviously, there's no backs on these because they've just been printed through. I've printed tags, shabby woods from my porch prints because these are the papers I've been using at the moment. Um, more shabby woods. Aren't they fantastic? I've done some backs of postcards. So these are just plain backs. These are some that had postage already paid on them. These have got the old, old king on. So these, well, they must be, they must be about 100 years old, those postcards. Little pussycat from Shabby Woods. <coughs> some postcards with, backs of postcards with the writing on. <coughs> That's a church. And so it continues. This postcard I really didn't like, but it's printed beautifully. I'm in love with it. It's like a really flimsy free postcard that you might get with a magazine or something. But how lovely is that printed? Could he, that could go be framed and put in a picture. Anyway, so there's all these. I've done a photograph. I've done some from sets. These are from a gothic um graphic set that I have. Backs of postcards. So I've done lots and lots and lots. I'm really excited with them all. So then, um, because I'm doing sort of woodland and forest themed and garden themed journals, this is a photograph that I took. And how amazing has that turned out? I printed that onto the coffee stain fabric. And how amazing. I'm not quite sure what to do with this. I am joining a textile group um, run by a, um, a friend of mine, joining after Christmas. So I might take that with me and ask those expert textile artists what they'd do. I think it's printed out fantastically. So what have I been doing with these? Well, I have made from the shabby woodland, I've made a journaling card. Put gesso on the back. I, I backed it. Put gesso on the back so it can be written on. This is a postcard. Again, this is from the Shabby Woods. And there's the back. It's got the uh, old king on and a bit of gesso on there. And what I've done is I've put them together with batting. I think it's called batting, is it? This stuff. Sandwich that in between a uh, front and a back. Let's have a look. Let's get a back. Watch me not be able to find one now. Right, so I've got a back like this. And I got a front like this. And I put the two together with batting and then just trimmed it, trimmed around the edges to make it fit. I picked like a more appropriate size front and back. So yeah, I made a tag. In fact, I love this tag. Just saw that. I love this tag so much. I'm going to make Christmas tags like this. And I'm also going to make Christmas cards like this for friends. So I'm going, to, I'm going to be busy over these next few days. I made this envelope. This again is from Shabby Woods. And using one of the uh, outlines and in there fits one of the postcards again i've put gesso on the back of that so i'm going to do my christmas cards like this for my dear friends i'm going to pop them in there like that and i'm going to give those out to my friends and then for on my um christmas presents i'll either use a tag like this 
I have made a tag like this as well with the punch in it. This one needs gessoing, but I haven't done that yet because I'll show you what I do there. Aren't they lovely? They're thin as well, so they'll fit great into you into your journals. So I'm absolutely like I've I've blown myself away. <laughs> I go to the textile group and there'll be these amazing creations, but I'm just the fact that I've stitched neatly round the edges and sandwiched two things together is just like mind blowing for me. But printing on the fabric, I mean that is beautiful. And I've made all my Christmas ones, I'll show you. So how did I do it? So as I said, I coffee dyed my fabric and I cut it roughly to the A4 size. I then used this, my favourite, by um, Threaders for Crafters Companion. It's a stick and stay for fabric, so it's a spray stick bond. So I sprayed it on there on my fabric, stuck that on. I ironed my fabric first if it needed it. Oh, I've done that to the edge yet. Then I got my iron, so this is my trusty crafting travel iron so that I'm not using my best iron and ironing board. I ironed over it. Make sure it's sticking around the edges. And then I'm just going to unplug my iron. And then using my scissors, I just cut around the A4 sheet of paper. If it didn't quite stick like it's not here, I'd just use a little bit of, sometimes the edges, if you don't quite catch them with the uh, spray. Normally I spray in a bigger area so I can be a little bit more liberal and wild with my spraying. So I would put just a little bit of um, glue stick on and then I cut. I love this noise that the scissors make. That when I was it reminds me of when I was a girl because I used to watch my mum sewing, and she used to work by day and then by in the evening she'd be sewing, making things for people. My mum's brilliant at sewing. She can just look at you, create a pat, measure you, create her own pattern. She'd never really worked off patterns, and uh, so she. My dad was busy building his business, so he worked away a lot. So my mum had those three kids and she would um, work by day, collect us all from Mrs. Drew. Mrs. Drew was our charmander. I think we were prob probably one of the first ever people to have charmanders back in the 70s. And um, we'd have our tea, which was, we always sat at the table and ate with mum. And then in the evening she would sew, she would have her sewing machine and I would have my little sewing machine at the side of her. But when she cut out fabric, I was never allowed the sharp scissors. I used to love the noise that it made when she cut out the fabric, loved it. If you cut a bit of paper off and it's not quite, square and um, for my printer it, it doesn't matter so what i do with that then i for my printer i have to put it face down because my printer brings it round that way so that's how i prepare my paper for printing on um i've already put one in the printer because i didn't want to be leaning over and then for my postcards, obviously you can just print from your printer, but I um, have my little selection here. I would choose what I wanted. So, and then I use a glue, good old trusty glue dot. And I just find one glue dot. And when you take them off, if you're careful taking them off, they don't damage your card. That's the, 
that's the one I showed you and I said it was like a free postcard from somewhere. I mean, that would never even survive the post. So they could glue dot on that one. Ah, that's the back. So as you can see, I'm just putting the glue dot in the middle and I'm just sticking the pictures on. This one is a uh, birthday greeting to baby. I'm going to pop that on there. So then, very carefully, and it can be done because I've done all of these, I put that face down like that on my uh, printer. So it can be photocopied. So I've got some paper in. I've got some postcards in. So I'll now just print. Um, stand for the box. Go back. Copy. Oh, keeps going to email now. Copy document. Starting the colour. There it is. Let's see what comes out. Aren't these pretty too? I've got these little fairy pictures and I got them online. They're in the public domain and I have uh, printed them onto tissue. Well, not tissue. It's the uh, airmail paper. Yeah, I like that. I hope this prints now. I hope it prints. So yeah, I collect put here, there and everywhere I go, I collect these postcards. But I just thought a fabric postcard for me was a little bit different, which went on to fabric tags and envelopes. And So what I am going to do, I'm going to make up some kits. I'll probably do some disassembled, like this, fronts and backs together. But then I'll put also some assembled kits into my Etsy shop. So I will put the link to my Etsy shop below. That would make a really nice little collection there. Here my, my uh, printer's printing away there. What I did as regards the gesso on the back, I just got a dry brush, got my gesso, and just dry brushed it on the back. On some of them, I then went over with, like on the postcards, the white look very white. So I just went over it with a little bit of Distress ink and that just torn down the whiteness but can still be written on. Oh it's cross thread. Because it needs to clean. That's that. That's that. And then for this also, for this one, this one I stitched the tag onto. This one I just threaded some silk uh sari oh, it's not silk it's like a sari chiffon through and pull that through and there's a tag with the uh thread on it Very, very pretty. Right, so here we are, printed out onto my paper, onto my fabric. I just literally then peel the paper off. That's where the little bit, uh, probably use a little bit of glue stick there, but as you can see, it comes off really easily. Um, I've obviously not lined that up perfectly on that edge, but it that doesn't matter. So what I do then is I cut these out. 
I'll still make these fit. Cut them out. So easy. The difficult bit is getting it through. Um, get, not the difficult, the time consuming bit is the um, putting the fabric on the, well, colouring your fabric with whatever you want to do. You don't even have to colour your fabric, but I wanted to coffee stain mine. So that it took me all morning to do all my coffee staining because I have used up a lot of fabric. Um, it's a good job I'd been to the store and bought lots of this cotton. I, I've used like, um, some of the cotton I've used was, looked like it was from an old bed sheet. You know it, but an Egyptian cotton bed sheet. And some of it was uh, just heavy cotton lining. So do this. Cut those out. <clears throat> and those two, I think, are, yeah, they're the same size. I didn't plan for that to happen, but they are. Oh, I had a really strange dream last night. It's just come to my head. Right, make sure you've got them the right way up. And then I get my, what I think is called batting. And I cut it slightly smaller than the uh, postcard. I get a glue stick. Because I could use, uh, my, what's it called, the 3-in-1 um, or fabric type but to me, sometimes they show through, but a glue stick doesn't it? And all you really want it to do is hold this, it's like cotton wool, batting, cotton wool, I'm sure it's called batting. I might be wrong, I'm sure if I am you will correct me, I'm sure you will, I'll just cut that off there a little bit. And then the top part. Now this one, I'm not going to put gesso on the back because I think this one is just decorative enough as it is. I don't think it would need. Um, I think it's just a decorative piece for in your journal. You could always um, use it as a flip up, couldn't you? You could use it as a flip up. You could, I don't know, you could use it as a book cover, make a little fabric book. Like I said, just pop it in an envelope like this one. Little fabric envelope, just tucked in your journal and it's just pretty. And you could always put some uh, paper in there, folded up paper in there with your, with your postcard. Or you can put the postcard with the gesso on but I think that's pretty um without writing on because the writing is there now what I do is I would very very carefully stitch around that so you can machine stitch it you could hand stitch it I did one um like I've stitched around with just a running stitch I did one with the um it called blanket stitch around this one i think that looks pretty those are the only two sort of fancy stitches i've tried um so what i do then is i go around the edge with the running stitch and then when i've been around the edge i would just tidy up so for example on this tag you can just see that the fabrics are just not quite level so i would just go around and just trim up, I left this tag specifically to show you this, trim up anywhere I thought would just need trimming. I'm so excited. I can't wait to get these in my journals. My subscribers, ooh, 
I needed a hundred for my hundred subscriber giveaway, which I'm doing the draw on Saturday. Have a look at that and have a look at the rule, that video and the rules because you've got to follow the rules. I'll do that draw on Saturday, but since I've put the rules up, I've had so many more people subscribing and. One of my videos, I couldn't believe over 800 people have watched it. I was just absolutely thrilled to bits. So, this is what I'm up to now. I'm making all these, so all these will become postcards and things. Some I might save for pockets in journals. I was also looking at this little bag that I really loved. Um, so I thought maybe to make some little bags using these as a front to put in your journal so like a little pocket bag maybe one that you know you could flip up so i'm going to have a look at that as well if i make those i'll show you what i've done um so this afternoon hubby's making tea yay good old lancashire hot pot at coronation street so it's not betty's hot pot it's russ's hot pot so this afternoon i'm going to continue with these i'm going to sew this one i'm going to make some more envelopes and I'm going to get some packs together so that when this goes on to um, my YouTube, I'll also have some kits, some things in my Etsy store for you to uh, peruse if you're interested in buying anything. So thank you, everybody, for subscribing. Thank you for all your fabulous messages you've really really spurred me on because i was so concerned about my videos you know will people like them are they interesting are they what people want to learn do we want more of this and less of that and what sort of thing do people want want in future videos uh one of the things people want is binding so i'm going to have to get my head together for that one I've just thought that would make as well. If they were the similar size, they would make a lovely book too. So yes, enjoy, have fun. I hope you print onto some fabric. Oh, I've also ordered some um, tea bag paper. But I don't, I don't know if you know or not, but our postage system's on strike in the UK. So, or maybe just in England. When, when I get that tea bag paper, I will let you know because I will put it into my shop. It's a very good price as well. I was really, really pleased with it. So um, I ordered quite a lot. And I bet the people who I bought it from thought, what does she need all this tea bag paper for? Perhaps she drinks a lot of tea. Anyway, I'm Sharon. This is Be Divine Vintage. Um, I will see you soon. I hope you've enjoyed my recording.